All right, for this pro tip, I wanna talk about one of my favorite Excel tools, data validation, and specifically how to use data validation to create drop-down lists within cells. Now, quick summary here. Data validation is all about limiting the values that a certain cell can accept. So you can say, I only want this cell to take whole numbers or positives or negatives or date ranges or data types like text or values. You can access that menu from the data tab, click data validation. Now within that data validation menu, you've got an option called a list. And the list option is the one that I use most frequently. That's what's gonna allow you to create that drop down menu containing a specific set of items. And you can either type those items directly in the dialog box separated by commas, or you can reference a cell range containing your list. Now, in this case here, we've manually typed them in. We've got three different values that this particular cell can take, 5%, 10%, or 20%. And when we press OK, it simply creates that dropdown containing those three items and those items only. Now you can also customize the input messages that users see when they select a cell with data validation or the error alerts that pop up if someone enters an invalid value. We're going to have some fun with that in the demo in just a minute. Now common use cases, uh, for one, like I said, creating formula-based models that have these variable controlled inputs. That's probably the most common use case for data validation list options. You can also prevent users from entering invalid values that might break a formula or yield meaningless results. Um, so you can limit to just decimals, just whole numbers, positives, negatives, etc. So without further ado, let's head to our Excel workbook and practice building some data validation drop down lists. Okay, so if you have your Excel Pro Tips workbook open, you're going to navigate to the data validation lists blue tab in our productivity tips section. Remember that you can always use the table of contents tab to find the tip and go ahead and click link to jump straight to the tab. And in this case, what we're looking at here is a property calculator. And this is something that I've actually built and used myself to evaluate the cost of different properties based on loan terms. And what we're doing here is entering in information about a property, you know, the purchase price and the tax rate, and then allowing the user to input three different values a down payment percentage, an interest rate percentage, and a term length in terms of the number of years of the loan. And based on those inputs, we have all sorts of calculations that determine the loan amount, the closing costs, and the monthly expenses, which all boil down to these calculated cells here, the cash to close and the monthly expenses. So you can see that for this made up property here that costs $599,000, if we were to put 10% down get 5% interest rate in our loan, and pay off that loan over 30 years, we would need $71,880 to close on that property, estimated, and we would expect to pay $3,718 a month. Now you can also see what happens if we change this to 20% down. Now you can see that our monthly payment is only 3,397, but we require more cash to close. So the bottom line is that we have these formula-driven outputs based on these user-determined inputs. So this is a great opportunity for us to use data validation to fix these inputs into certain categories or lists of values. So let's start with the down payment cell here. We're gonna go into the data tab, data validation, and instead of allowing any value in that cell, we're gonna allow a list. And again, we could have the list exist in cells somewhere and reference that cell range, or we can type them in right here. In this case, I'm going to type them in because we only have three values, 5%, 10%, or 20%. These are common down payment amounts. You can customize this however you see fit, but for now, let's stick with these three and press OK. Now, once we've done that, it's created this dropdown, and now we have those three options and those three options only for that down payment percent cell. Let's go ahead and do the same thing for interest rate, data validation, list, and we'll create a range of realistic interest rates. Maybe it's 3%, 3.5%, 4%, 4.5%, and 5%. So these five values for this particular cell. Press OK, and there you go. And then last but not least, term length. Let's just do two term lengths here in a list. 
either a 15 year loan or a 30 year loan. So two items in that list, press OK. And now what we've done is created a fixed set of variable inputs that users can use to explore our different model outputs. And they can select any combination of those three values based on the guidelines that we've created using data validation. Now, last but not least, let's practice customizing some of those pop-up messages. So we can go back for a down payment cell, back into data validation, and we've got these two additional tabs, input message and error alert. So the input message is gonna show up once a user selects that cell. You can give it a title, like down payment, and a message, like select a value. All right, press OK. And now when a user selects that cell, they're gonna see that pop up that indicates to them, okay, this is a user input cell. I can click the drop down and select one of the values here. So certainly not necessary, but a nice option uh, to use if you'd like. Another one which is really funny is the error alert. And you can customize this however you see fit. You can change the style of the icon, like a warning sign for instance. And this is gonna pop up a box in cases where users try to enter an invalid value into the cell. So a value that breaks the rules of our data validation list. So we could do a title like, hey, and an error message like, you know, stick to the list, pal. And obviously, you know, do whatever you want, put whatever message in here uh, that you'd like, press OK. And now as long as the user sticks to the list, they're all good, but if they try to go rogue and say, okay, I actually want to put down 8%, they're going to see that pop up. It says, hey, stick to the list, pal. And then they know, okay, I did something wrong. I've got to choose one of these items. And there you go. So there you have it, data validation drop-down lists, one of my favorite tools in Excel.